Life is about constant evolution. Always better today than we were yesterday. Welcome to The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday. I'm your host, Scott Williams, and today uh, we're going to be talking about what it's like to be a Navy SEAL. And our guest today is Lieutenant Jay. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me here, Scott. Thanks uh, for coming and and sharing with us um, your experience. To kind of just begin this, let's begin at the beginning, right? Let's talk about your, your origin story for NSW. Where, where were you in your life when you decided to come into this community? Yeah, actually, I started pretty young. Um, I'm from a small town in North Carolina. Uh, my stepfather was a football coach uh, there in North Carolina, and he coached uh, a SEAL team member, Josh Harris. He was actually a SEAL team member killed in Afghanistan in 2008. Um, so when I was younger, I'd heard about the SEAL teams and like the, you know, the fun action you know, how it sounded like a good time. And then when I was, I think roughly 14, uh, is when uh, Josh was killed and I went to his funeral and saw just the brotherhood, camaraderie, um, all of his team members and teammates come together and just the way they were talking about him and just hearing about their um, their work they'd done together and just the brotherhood that they had and shared uh, really interested me at a young age and influenced me to pursue becoming a Navy SEAL. Um, from that, that led me towards uh, the Naval Academy. So played sports in high school, football, and pole vaulted. And through pole vaulting, I was able to um, really get my foot in the door at the Naval Academy, actually. So I got recruited by them to come pole vault there. And then while at the Academy, I went through the process. They have a pretty streamlined process for uh, getting into NSW from the Naval Academy. So that process looks like um, there's a screener your junior year, um, and then after that screener, uh, you come out to SOAS, which they're still running today. And then after SOAS, I got selected to come to BUDS. Yeah. And that's the SEAL Officer Assessment and Selection, which we've talked about pretty frequently in most recent episodes. And once you got into the pipeline, um, what would you say was the most crucial aspect of getting through training for you? Hmm. I think the cru- most crucial aspect for me was really my, which you're told this a lot in the beginning phases of um, BUDS and prep, or BUDS prep, or BUDS orientation, what it was at the before, uh, and BUDS orientation was developing your why, which I'd never really thought about it much, but I had developed my why. I knew I, why I wanted to be a SEAL. So I think it was in the, you know, the tough moments of going through the training pipeline, just remembering that, um, and developing that mental toughness um to be honest with you it's it's hard to reflect totally on like how i was getting through it but i would like to say that that's what kept driving me forward i had an interesting experience with first phase where so i really had to do first phase three times which is really the the grinder like it's the first introduction into the seal pipeline doing that three times really took me digging deep and you know like at the time i was pretty frustrated and having a hard time dealing with that and now reflecting back on that, I'm very, I'm grateful that I was able to do it three times and really develop myself even more and my mental capacity to uh, endure uh, through that process. You know, you brought up mental toughness. Um, that's a term that people use around here. Um, but from a personal point of view, what does that, what does that mean to you? What was your mental toughness? Um, Interesting question because I think I've I now have a different answer than I would have had for you then. Uh, my answer now, um, in reflecting upon my time in the training pipeline, would be a sense of presence, um, being able to not think about the next evolution, the next day, how much time you had ahead of you in the pipeline, um, and I think a valuable thing that happens in Buzz that you don't really notice is happening at the time, but if you're doing it in a way that is mentally tough or mental toughness, you are just focusing on the evolution at hand. You're not focusing on all the pain to come, I guess you could say. It's just all, and I I was talking to a friend the other day and the guy I went through Buds with and we were saying, man, it's really nice in Buds in a way because it's the most present I've ever been. You're really just in that moment with your buddies, um, just getting through the evolution together and that teamwork camaraderie and that sense of presence is, I think that, 
ability to focus, you know, just on the task at hand mm -hmm. is, and it's an invaluable skill that you learn, not only that applies to buds, but as you go through the teams and even anywhere else you'll find yourself in life. Yeah. So your focus is, um, is on the here and now. It's not the, the regrets about the past. It's mm -hmm. not the worries about the future. You're, you're too busy for that. You're too fully involved physically to allow yourself mentally to wander off the ranch you you have to focus on what is happening to you right now yes is that what you're saying yes I'm, and i think the, the the toughest part about that is which makes it a, an element of mental toughness for me is the ability to focus on the here and now i don't know if you ever tried your hand at like meditating or anything like that but it's really hard to just focus on what where i am right now and just clear your head of all the thoughts of all the other stuff that you could be thinking about especially in buds in a place where it's like tomorrow is another hard day it's another tough day ahead mm. so if not focusing on like the next surf immersion or anything like that so beyond buds um and, and i've heard a lot of team guys say this that um in some respects the team life is actually harder than than buds um they the challenges that they've had to face on deployments um were more difficult than buds how do you see it um I agree with that. I think it's always, again, you're in the day at hand, right? Buds is in the past. It's hard to really um, look at the past and think about how challenging it was versus I think today, because you know, retrospect kind of makes it seem easier than it may have been at the moment. So I think the challenge at the the team is maintaining that sense of focus and presence, and you're working um, long hours. You're um, the expectation is high. Uh, in order to be a good teammate, in my opinion, you need to have that 100% focus on the task at hand. And it comes to that switch of, in BUDS, your only thing you have to focus on is BUDS. That's it. When you're at a team, you might have your family life. You might have, uh, you know, bills to pay, all these other things you got, you're thinking about. But to be able to, like, make that a separate entity from your uh, present moment and being able to focus on bringing 100% to your platoon, to your teammates every single day can be really challenging, especially when, there's, especially when there's a lot of work. It almost feels like more work than there's time to get done on deployment. Um, but being able to know and trust that your buddy's doing 100% of his job and you're doing 100% of your job. So collectively, it, it is challenging to have that focus at all times, and it is exhausting. <laughs> Yeah, 100% involvement. It, um, it doesn't seem like that leaves much room for things like a family life or a, a personal life outside of the team. So um, what's been your experience with that? I th I've experienced it being both challenging and rewarding. I think it is a challenge to be able to um, separate that home life. But at the same time, I found it more difficult to find myself focusing on anything other than the task at hand in the platoon life so because i mean i'll be honest it's it's a lot of fun like the job is a lot of fun you're around your buddies all day you're doing a really fun job with really fun training really exciting um mission at hand uh, so i found it more difficult to focus on home life so i think the challenge for me more was being able to delineate between okay i have I've done all my work for the day and I'm, I can now have to switch off to try and focus on home life things. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it, it teaches you a lot about, I mean, that's an invaluable skill. Like it's, it, you can bring that to anywhere in the world. You can bring the ability to dedicate yourself hundred percent to what you're doing, which actually makes you more efficient and then be able to switch over to the other thing and not have, again, it's that sense of presence. It's that ability to focus on the task at hand without, thinking about your bills, thinking about your wife, thinking about your, um, your dog at home, whatever it may be. Um, we call that compartmentalizing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it, it's, I think that's where the challenge comes in. Yeah. Well, you were talking about like having fun, um, in the teams, um, and aside from deployments, what is, what are some of the fun moments in training that, that you can talk about man all of it 
even the bad times. I mean, not even, I wouldn't even call them bad times. The tough times of, you know, starting out in first phase, it's, it's really challenging. But now reflecting back on it, it was a lot of fun. And it's fun to remember all those. Even the, because you're going through it with your buddies, right? So, like, it may have been really challenging, but that really builds camaraderie. And it builds, like, trust in a group of people that you just met. Um, so that aspect being a lot of fun and then obviously when you get to the more uh when you've made it further along in the pipeline and the more um shooting explosives jumping diving all of that stuff i mean i think if you're the kind of person that's looking to come to this community you already know all those things exist and look forward to them and then once you're doing them it is very exciting it's cool to like put on your gear for the first time to go do some dives or mm -hmm. to jump out of a plane for the first time it's all really exciting adrenaline rush um and I, I couldn't tell you what would be the, I would call the most fun. I think it's just all collectively been just a really exciting, great time for me. Uh, and I think most guys in the teams would agree that it's one of the best jobs in the world because you really are just having a really exciting time. Um, but again, it is, requires that sense of focus. Like you have to be in the moment so that you can do all those things correctly and be efficient at them. Sea, air, land, after you got in the teams, which part of those was your favorite? I gotta say air. I really enjoy jumping. Um, I found myself doing it in the civilian sector now just for fun. Um, but I, you know, my last platoon ended up being on our dive element where we just had an extra, I can't remember, a few weeks of diving. Um, and at first I wasn't that excited about it because I mean, it's not like your recreational diving in clear waters, fun time. It's pitch black, can't see anything, staring at a compass or staring at nothing. The uh, bio loom in the water rush past your face as you're swimming. Mm -hmm. um, and I found myself at the beginning of that dive block being like not that excited about four hour long dives, but towards the middle end, I found myself really enjoying it and finding it like a, a place of honestly it's just forced meditation like you have nothing else to do so yeah. you just kind of just a little bit sensory deprived yes it's, it's like it's almost like a float tank you could say you know there's just nothing going on you're just kicking going making your turns now if you're driving if you're the person who is uh navigating it's a little more pressure and uh but even that's fun because you have this task at hand yeah. and you're just focusing 100 percent on that water tends to be a little cold in places right <laughs> it can be cold <laughs> uh you know i actually I dove in some colder waters and other places overseas, and I found the equipment where they give us the equipment and the, you know the, the way they take care of us. So the equipment you're using is typically uh, well suited for what the environment you're in. So I haven't ever found myself being, I would say, like miserable, cold, or anything like that. Yeah. Um, now I have heard stories of teammates having experiences where they have been uh, extremely cold on dives and stuff like that, but I haven't really found myself being. Uh, too overwhelmed by the elements on dives specifically yeah. so uh, broadly speaking in your career so far where have the teams taken you what parts of the world let's just say um so the teams so far i'm not exactly sure what i can say i would say uh, without naming countries <laughs> um broad areas of the world so i've been over in europe and i've been over in africa um both fun experiences for me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really was an opportunity to see some places that I'd never, I wouldn't imagine I'd ever gone to otherwise. Yeah. And also be very down and in to the, not the, I would say tourist attraction of that area, just down and in like working with um, partner forces, uh, getting to know, actually know soft element um, people who are in other countries and just understanding their culture better which mm -hmm. has been really exciting. Um, and I think that off offers a lot of perspective on to just an individual to understand uh, other countries and other places. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I know when I deployed that, that when I got out and just kind of went among the people wherever I was, that it, uh, it really opened up my mind. And I started thinking about like, hey, they're, they're just like us. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want the same basic mm -hmm. things, you know, be left alone in peace, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> eat, have a job to provide for their families yep. and, and just live their own lives. Yep. And generally how people are everywhere I find, mm -hmm. uh, 
despite any language or, or culture differences, it all comes down to the basics. So let's talk a little bit about, because I get this question, what kind of supporting resources are there in Naval Special Warfare um, for family members, um, like while you're on deployment, um, you know, it, are they left alone to fend for themselves? Do they have like a spouse's group or is there anything that you can tell us about that? My experience, what I will say about the uh, SEAL community is it's very, it is a community, it's tight knit. Um, my buddy's wife is friends with my other buddy's wife, you know, like my wife's friends with their wife, their friends, and they all will end up hanging out while we're on deployment. Uh, and it does become like, uh, it does create a friend group of just a like experience for the uh, family members. Um, and it, and it's, just a, it's just a solid community of um, our people taking care of our people, right? No one's isolated, left behind, that kind of thing. Um, I can't say no one's isolated, left behind, but I can say that there is a lot of resource and a lot of availability and um, opportunity for spouses and family members to come together. And it's because we do, we do hang out. Like outside of work, like um, I was on the East Coast and I found it just being like a lot of all of the guys from my, or a good amount of the guys from my platoon and other platoons alike would hang out. And when we would hang out, we'd all have our significant others with us. And then when they were, and they would hang out with each other. So then when we were on deployment, they found themselves also hanging out and being able to just have a similar um, lifestyle of having their partner gone um, doing the job. Yeah. Let me switch gears a little bit. You're a junior officer in the teams. So for those guys out there who are thinking about joining the community as a SEAL officer, what can you tell them about what it's like? Yeah, uh, what, I would, what I would say is one, it is, a, I would argue, one of the best opportunities for personal development um, for anyone looking to, one, an exciting place to work, and two, to grow themselves as an individual um, in their own personal development. So, uh, I mean, we could talk about mental toughness and um, work ethic and all the other great skills that I've learned. Um, but the question was, one more time, what is it like for a junior officer in the teams? And, and, and is, this, is this something in your experience so far that you think would be career enhancing or, or even an advantage uh, for when you decide to get out and go into maybe corporate world or whatever? Yeah. For me personally, I couldn't imagine that I would make it to the um, heights of personal development that I have made it to without doing this job. I think it has offered me such an opportunity to put me in, I guess the way I'd say it is like in a box really, and within parameters of uh, from age, I mean, you could, I could even start at the Naval Academy because I went to the Naval Academy wanting to become mm -hmm. a SEAL. So starting my career at the Naval Academy and then as a SEAL, it's put me in, in a community of like-minded individuals who are seeking to be the best they can be at whatever that is they are doing. Uh, they are, it's very, and being surrounded by that, you find a mentorship that I don't think you could really find anywhere else. You find a lot of, um, like all the skills translate is what I guess what I'm trying to say is like all of the skills when it comes to working hard at work, um, focus, um, giving it your best effort and really being dedicated to what it is you are doing and yourself and your perspective around what you bring, I guess what you bring to the table. Yeah. So I, I just don't think that I could have made it to where I am today without it. I think it has set me up for whatever it is I choose to do. I know with a great deal of confidence that I can do it. I know that because of doing this job and it, it setting a goal and achieving that goal and um, being surrounded by mentors and just a job that requires you to be very focused, it has set me up to with skills that I will be able to translate anywhere. Um, the SEAL teams also sent me to grad school. So I, I did my first platoon and then they sent me to grad school. And uh, obviously I was opposed to that at the time. <laughs> um, I just wanted to do... Um, 
I just wanted to be in the job. Yeah. And then again, anything you do offers perspective. Uh, so it was a great deal of perspective there that they gave me almost forced upon me that I am now grateful for. Um, so I'm, and like that, there's many opportunities. I find in any, there's lots of opportunities for leadership, um, especially as a junior officer. And I think on the enlisted side, just as much, I'm maybe even more, I'd say, especially as a newer team member, as a new guy, I feel like everyone's kind of in the same boat of trying to just take care of their job, but also finding opportunities where like you're in charge of something, like you're going to be in charge of something, whatever it might be, just like supply officer or supply LPO or something like that. But, um, I find myself in the process of uh, potentially getting out here in the near future. And I find myself wanting to start a company of my own, uh, start a nonprofit and with a focus on something I actually did in my last platoon, it was winter warfare. So like, would that be in the focus and my love for snow sports, I find it the, I've learned the ability one to not only just be focused on the task at hand and really like that work ethic that was required, but also I think a lot of it is the confidence that you gain in the SEAL teams. And that confidence is invaluable because I think any of us can relate to wanting to do something and that voice in the back of your head trying to talk you out of it. Um, I think I learned a lot in the SEAL teams about how to quiet that voice and just have confidence in my abilities and myself and just put that next step, the step in front of the next step in front of the next step to just keep moving forward one piece at a time. Um, and again, that's just that skill you learn in BUDS at the beginning is just being in the moment, taking care of what you need to take care of there and then taking care of the next step. Um, so I, I find I haven't had the ability to translate it totally yet to the civilian sector i'm looking forward to doing it and i know that because of this um the shaping i have from being in the seal teams it will set me up for success in the future when it comes to doing something on my own and having the confidence to do something and the work ethic to do something that would be required and to build a team that will be uh, efficient at accomplishing that task Wow, that sounds great. The keys to unlocking success, confidence, shutting up that voice that tells you that maybe you can't do it, and uh, and being in the present and having the confidence to to go after the team, go after the the task at hand, and be able to work with the team to accomplish that. I wow. So there you have it. Well, <laughs> thanks, Lieutenant Jay, for joining us today. On the only easy day was yesterday. Uh, we'll have another podcast soon. Uh, we'll dive in more into team life and, and uh, what the SEAL and SWIC are, uh, are really doing. Thank you once again. My name's Scott Williams, and this was The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday. Thanks, Scott.